it's recording. We're in? Yep. We're in. Welcome everyone <laughs> again to White Belt MMA. This is Eno Gellas and Rusty and Karami. So we wanted to show you that we take the Wu-Tang Clan slogan, diversify your bonds to heart. So we are not stuck or trapped in the Ultimate Fighting Championship or UFC. We're going to be looking at all types of MMA organizations. We're going to be looking at left way and other bare knuckle varieties, discussing different philosophies throughout the course of this podcast. But also discussing UFC. But also <laughs> UFC, because right now it's the GOAT. And like uh, Israel Desanya says, who we're going to get to, we're also interested in goat blood. Goat blood. But uh, anyway, today Some goat we're gonna, blood is gonna happen in September. Some goat blood is gonna be going. What's happening in September? ADCC, baby. Oh well, so that's what we're gonna talk about. So good segue. Yeah. We're gonna talk about grappling, and then a kind of half breed of grappling and striking known as combat jujitsu, the brainchild of one Master Eddie Bravo, and then we're gonna get into that UFC that you mentioned. So. Rusty, why don't you start us off with some big picture thoughts on ADCC while I pull up some of the names of the, the folks who have been invited and who've earned their keep to get in there. Yeah, I think they, they announced a bunch of people. Um, I think it's like half the brackets now. But um, I'm really happy with this, the current state that it is, like the competitors that are competing. And I'm excited for some people to be entering. Um, I think Gordon Ryan is probably a big favorite to win everything. But... Um, it depends. It depends who fills it out, who fills out the group. You mean in the absolute division or his, his division? I, I mean, I was, I was trying to entice you. trying to say you. double goal, like trying, IBJJF? Like, what you talking about? I was trying to entice you because I know you, you have a, a bias towards the heavier grapplers. What do you uh, mean? Where you think the absolute, of all absolutes, that's the highest level. So, Is that my singular opinion or is it also why it's called absolute? Um, I think it's absolute because of the weight. And not necessarily how good the you are. Best, right? Uh, they're I think the best. You could say no. You could say like that. people like Edwin Najimi, who is used to fight at sixty-six kilograms. This time he's fighting seventy-seven kilograms. Has lost in his division sixty-six, but won in the absolute, showing that his weight was irrelevant. His technique overcame everyone else, right? Yeah, I think. But I think the technique. You know, you could say that there's better technique in the smaller divisions and be completely accurate and still say that those divisions would lose versus a larger person. You know? Then how do you explain a smaller guy? Does his technique just that much better than those other guys' technique? I think it, it depends on the day. I don't think it's so absolute black and white in that sense. Um, but I don't know. I think uh, there's some clear favorites, I think, in the different brackets. I think it'd be really fun to see how Nicky Ryan does. Uh, Gordon's brother, I think it's his first time competing, and he's purple belt still, right? I really don't know if he's purple or brown. I, I There's no secret about that. his belt. He I, I his think belt. he's purple, but it might be just an age issue. Yeah, I believe there's still some arbitrary signaling marks in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu where if you're under 18, you can't be. I don't know if he turns 18 by the time of the tournament, but I think no. he's 17 right yeah, now. Yeah, I don't think he does, but. It's not like he's going to pose with his belt either. Have you ever seen him in a gi? I'd rather see that shit. I don't know. No, no. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's the whole Dana Air Death Squad. And they killed the game in the beginning with heel hooks. But now they've revealed that that was just a setup that was exploiting the weakness of the game the as it is. State, yeah. The current state. Yeah. But now they've been showing people that, you know, they could compete in IBJJF rule sets that don't allow any of these types of ligament tears on the legs and still defeat people with classic BJJ with chokes and strangles. Speaking of classic, like we're gonna, he's gonna be fighting like some legends, some uh, old school guys that are Kobe, like, Cobrinha. Yeah. How do you feel about that? The man's been around forever. And yeah, he's man. Dominated that. Division. A friend of mine from college uh, has this great series on YouTube called Legend Diary, mm -hmm. and he's got a great interview with him because that's his Brazilian Jiu Jitsu professor. Oh, and like downtown, LA. downtown LA. Yeah. Is he downtown? I, I think he is downtown. Downtown. No, I think Oh, he might have both. Who yeah. knows? I don't know. He's balling. I saw the documentary. It's like a mini interview doc slash documentary on him. And he grew up in Capoeira, like, until right. he was 16. Pretty late. Dude, that dance, then got into that dancing stuff helps BJJ, man. The rhythm, the movements. Yeah, the movement. It's similar to, Hips. I think, Eddie Bravo's black belts that did break dancing. Salsa and shit, man. I mean, yeah. it's not salsa, but I'm saying if you get a hip movement. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to help. It's the motion of the ocean. I think it doesn't guarantee you a spot as a BJJ champion, 
No. But it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't Any hurt. athletic background you have. The yoga hurt. guys are pretty good usually. They come yeah. up with the yoga background. There are football guys. Gymnasts. Wrestlers. You get all sorts of shit that can be good. He's got the athletic yeah. translation. So there's also AJ uh, Agazar, Gio Martinez, and Ethan Crelston in Ooh, that division. The wow. 66 kilograms. Thank you for giving them that. There are other names listed. I personally don't know them as, as much. There's my hot take too. I think that brings back my hot take of uh, how 10th Planet's fallen behind. What do you think? The Brandon? other, the other um, schools of thought in BJJ currently. Um, and I don't know if it's because they're so... Um, when you say falling behind, what metric are you saying? But just by who's winning the big tournaments. Who's you mean the top of the top, the creme de la creme. I know what you're going to say. You're going to say some stuff about how it's uh, IBJJF rule set or all no, other rule thing. sets. And how EBI, I mean, how 10th Planet guys are usually EBI kind of rule set. Sure. I'll give you that. Well, no, that's one thing, but I didn't even mention that. In my head, I was thinking, I think there are different models of systemization and education. And I think maybe what you're pointing to is that at some of the higher levels, maybe there's uh, the way that they're expanding is too quick. So some of the higher level coaching hasn't, they haven't received it. That's... But the kind of quick general plan to get someone untrained to BJJ to be really good at local tournaments. I think 10 Planet guys are everywhere. No, winning. for sure. There's a thing about being like meeting the criteria, meeting the bar. And then there's the people that win are the ones that are going over the bar. I think 10 Planet gets you to the bar faster than some of the other methods just because they have a no gi focus. And if you're doing a no gi tournament, you're going to have the guys that are more experienced doing no gi. Whereas most gyms have twice a week classes, you know, they're not going to get the same amount of uh, mat time. But I think that in terms of they get the people to a certain level. But going over to the next level, and it could be your point about how they there's too many of them. They like every a brown belt can make a tenth planet gym versus yeah. like black belts making tenth planet gym. One of the brown belts that was in combat jiu jitsu wait. fight night is opening up a spot just right now in New York. Oh, uh, see, interesting. And but uh, around the Dana Hair Death Squad and Marcelo Garcia's. Gym it's kind of like the, the the telephone game a little bit, where you know like some you tell someone one thing and that person's got to tell the next thing. They're losing a little bit of jiu-jitsu with every, you know, expansion. That's kind of certainly thing. one theory. That's if you think that it's not systematized properly or if you think there's some rushing going around. Oh, I think, you know, Eddie's system is very, like, organized. He had, I think he has, like, they drill certain moves on certain days and it's, like, yeah. very, like, technical and exact. But I don't know if it's that way all the way down the line. Well, you know, like, I don't know. It if certainly it, seems more systematized. It seems to defeat the critique that Ben Askren laid against most jiu-jitsu schools on the Joe Rogan experience. Three episodes, three Joe Rogan uh, experience uh, shout-outs. Oh, there might be a million We more. might as well get uh, get some sort of money back at some point. Uh, uh, I'd be down. <laughs> I'm down to Joe, you want to sponsor just, us? I'm just saying, if we can get hey, some bro. Rogan, but three for three. For three hey, bro. Continue your points. So. Uh, what's his name? Uh, who's the British dude from Get Him to the Greek? Russell Brand? Okay, yes. Yeah, that right. that's the name, right? Yeah. <laughs> Russell, Russell Brand said that Joe Rogan is the 800-pound gorilla in the room around which all other podcasts in this space kind of orbit. Sure, sure. And, and I like that We're the smallest little thing dot on the constellation. We're, the, we're so far out. Anyway, um, Let's go to you had a point, though, and you didn't finish your point. I did. About Ben Askren? You, you were yeah. There? You were there? He systematized it. Yeah. Eddie Bravo's system is, his system of teaching and Dana Harris' system of teaching seem to be an organized curriculum. I'd, I'd also point to Hannah Arakido, who have their online Grace University and their academy as well. These systems seem to defeat the critique that Ben Askren tried to lay, that you teach one or two techniques and then you just spar the whole time, as opposed to instructing how to do a move and then heavy, heavy focus on drilling them from a position, as you would do in, in chess games that you play to prepare for a full chess match. Right. I mean, I, I don't disagree with you, but I just, I, I, the proof is in the pudding a little bit for me. And I'm just looking at the results and I'm not seeing too many of those guys. So, Cobrinha versus Nicky Ryan, who wins and why? <laughs> I, I mean, you can't even, like, they, they haven't even come close to each other, right? Who wins and why? Right. Um, I think that. 
It'll probably be points. I don't think either of them is going to get submitted. That's interesting. It's going to be some sort of advantages, or I, I forget how ADCC works sometimes. But um, and I think that I can't say his nickname well, but Ruben is, uh, is going to be definitely on top. And he's okay. going to nullify all of uh, Nikki's stuff. AJ versus Geo. AJ Gracie Baja they, versus they, Geo Ten Plan. They beef too, right? Like they got some serious beef. What do you think? Um, One of them trains heavy gi. Says if you don't train gi, then you're not going to be good at jujitsu. Hands down. The other one is no gi all day worldwide. Yeah. And I think like one of them was a wrestler, so probably his experience. With yes. Like, you know. Um, with at least the takedown, defense, yeah. and offense. I don't have they fought before. I don't know. I don't know. I think they have, but I think I'll probably say. Um, uh, AJ as well because he seems a little bigger. He seems, yeah. he seems like a bigger guy than Gio. I think Gio's like smaller, yeah. know, frame wise. Um, but that's super interesting, and I can't wait to see who else they add. Like if Rafael Mendez is in it, I don't know if he's already in it or not, but if they're gonna invite him. Okay, is that Augusto Mendez? No, Rafael is um, our jiu-jitsu guy. He's um, I forget where that is. I know that that's a really well known place. I don't know if it's in San Juan or not. So, um, I actually don't know the rest of the guys in the 66. In the 77, the names that stuck out to me are Wagner Hocha, who's the first person in a combat jiu-jitsu match to actually TKO somebody. He <laughs> slaps from I mouth. I love that shit. You slaps just... from mouth. Yeah. It's amazing that that happened. And then Edwin uh, Najmi is also Gracie Baja Northridge is opening up uh, Gracie Baja and Tarzana pretty soon, probably competing with Jean-Jacques there. And then Dylan Dal Dylan sure. Danis, uh, who just got suspended by the Nevada Commission and had to pay them a few thousand dollars. Also a Bellator fighter and the jiu-jitsu coach of one Conor McGregor. Yeah. So those names stick out to me. And I think it's cool that Bellator allows their guys to grapple because I've seen some other Bellator names on the list. But uh, do any of these other names stick out to you? JJ Torres, Ross Nichols, oh, Jonathan yeah. Satava, John Combs, Lucas Lepre. Oliver Taza. I mean, obviously, I mean, Lucas Lepre is a legend in the game. Talk to me about um, him. I mean, I, he said he's got very old school jiu jitsu. He's like been around for a while and he's like got a lot of wins, had some battles with, I think, Michael Lange. Yeah, it says he's one of the invited people as opposed to the people who won merit yeah, yeah, he's Do you have any opinions on these kind of backdoor invitations versus Well, no, I think they, they give it to guys time. that are doing really well. You know, they, yeah. give, they, they give it to guys that are like doing well that year usually or even like recently they don't give it to yeah. just like you know name recognition oh you've been there before it's like they give it to them for for merit as yeah. well and you don't um, think there's anyone getting it like past the prime of old achievements um, no because they're all fucking good at that level like everyone's so good Respect. um i think ross nichols is a, is a dark horse in that division um he's like really really hard to pass his guard he usually plays off his back Oh, he's a he's a Roger Gracie guy. Yeah, he's with Roger, Roger Gracie. Roger, yeah, um, he's awesome, and he just is winning everything. He's dominating, and people can't pass him like, at all. Like he's like. And you talking about gi and no gi or no, just no gi? Because ADCC is no gi, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. it's a no gi thing. So he's fine in that way. I think he trains a lot of no gi. He's won a lot of uh, uh, Polaris and yeah. uh, a lot of tournaments so he's really good um, Edwin's trained RDA as I said Wagner Hocha's got his own gym yeah and Dylan Dan I was you know what I would love MMA recently yeah you know what, what I would love it would be great speaking of Dylan Dennis yeah. would be if like Marcelo Garcia came out of retirement came back in the 77 oh my god trains I mean fights against his students teacher or versus disciple that's then, some uh, Darth Vader versus just, Obi-Wan Kenobi Absolutely, he would probably wipe the floor with Dylan. Do you think so? Sexy. You don't yeah. think he's past his prime? He's only 37. He's not even that old. He yeah. just like stopped because he didn't like people disrespecting each other. That's what he said in the interview. He's like, yeah. he just has become too disrespectful. How old do you think a grappler can maintain his grappling prime? As opposed to like an MMA uh, fighter. MMA fighter, the, the lifespan seems to be shorter. Yeah, I mean, a lot of sports, like, you know, like LeBron or whoever, like, Late Tom 30. Brady is the example I think we've got to think about with him winning the Super Bowl this year. Yeah, Tom Brady's 40 plus. But these guys are like solid even into their late 30s, or early 40s. I don't know yeah. about grappling, just because you're grappling younger guys all the time. Yeah. And it's a little bit more combat and like physically oriented than like the NFL or 
you know, it's a trade-off though between knowledge and endurance probably yeah so whichever you think is more important to have more knowledge i think corbinia um, is even older than marcelo so like he's in, he won last year you yeah. know so it's like i i think marcelo would do fine <laughs> i don't think he would have any trouble that's good and speaking of another guy who I would love to get in um if we skip down the line a little bit and it's go like, ahead go ahead if hodger we're not bound i'm honestly not super excited uh, about the 88 division. Craig right? Jones! Craig Jones is there. Xander Hibero. So watch. And Rustin uh, Chizev is there. Yeah. Keenan Cornelius of the fame is there. Yeah. There, there are some solid guys there. I'm not mad. Is that what you wanted to jump to? No, no. To I, was gonna say, I was going to say if, if Roger would just come back for super heavyweight and just... Is that the 99 um, kilogram or the 99 no, kilogram I think plus? he'd probably be plus. He's big. Plus? Yeah. He's more than 220 pounds? No, he's probably something around there. So it would be okay. between the two of them. But he, he, would, cut? he would absolutely go for double. He would go yeah. for absolute afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. It would be great to see him battle Uchecha again. That would be phenomenal. He's, and he's not in his 40s. He had a full MMA career. He's late, thir- late 30s as well. It's him and Marcelo. Yeah. And they're all around the same age. They have one last go at it. Go for it because AC's it once every two yeah. years, you know. So it's when like, when Chrome was fighting in the UFC, they brought out this weird statistic that a a Gracie member hadn't won in the UFC yeah. since 1994, yeah. and it was it was a little misleading because there are obviously other major MMA promotions where they have won it. Just UFC. Yeah, and so Hodge had his loss in the UFC, but he, he won elsewhere, and so I. It's it's weird to think about, you know. They they were kind of putting down that name, but this is their territory, right? This is wow. I know it's the Abu Dhabi Combat Club, but this is really it's the jujitsu guys are the ones who win more, yeah. right, than other graphic. Of course, not as many sambo, not as many <laughs> sumo, not as I many think American it's exclusively wrestlers. Exclusively right? jujitsu this year so far. There hasn't been one from another thing. But is is that again? Is that by merit and invitation? Is it or? You know what I mean? Is it that backdoor it, deals didn't allow no, some guys? Slowly, or they really I think it's slowly that they're just not qualifying because there's going to be qualifications in place and yeah. those guys are not going to qualify. They're not beating the BJJ guys. Yeah. And I think the BJJ guys right now, since it's like such a hot sport, they're more popular. Like, you know, like you can't find like a famous, name a couple of Sambo guys off the top All of the head. Dagestanis in MMA right, right now. Right, but I'm saying purely Sambo guys <laughs> yeah, that don't fight. I don't know. You know? Like the Sambo combat masters? Some, obviously yeah, some D1 wrestlers and Olympic wrestlers are getting noticed now and they know they're getting popular, but those guys aren't going to come do ADCC, yeah. you know, so I don't so know. So since you jumped, jumped ahead and we're talking about the, the big boys, who's the most exciting? Either the 99 or the 99 plus kilograms of the oh, people man. who've been announced. There's there's just different styles in that one. Like, yeah. I would love to see what the hell happens with uh, of that blue belt, Nick Rodriguez. If he gets oh yeah, if he gets up against also from the Dana Dead like, Squad. If he goes up against someone like Muchecha, who's just got like massive amounts of experience, ten sh- titles, whatever, like in yes. just like traditional jujitsu versus some like freak athlete. What's Who your random like guess or educated guess as to what happens in that? I don't know situation. if we'll even run into that, but I think that's new school versus old school classic question. I think that Nick is like dominating people that are pretty solid, but I think there's like certain levels to it. So there, I don't yeah, know. I don't know. There if are levels dominate. to this shit. Yeah, I don't and know. And you definitely got to find out. Vinny Magalesh mm-hmm. and Rafael Lovato Jr. are both interesting to me because, like I mentioned, Dylan earlier, these guys have just fought in the PFL. And in Bellator, mm-hmm. and here they are, still their contracts allowing them to grapple. Yeah. Do you think I that think UFC not it's not exclusive? As well? I don't think UFC is not that. You can probably get away with grappling in your contract, but it's something you have to negotiate for. On and I don't know if you end up losing money if you negotiate that because of insurance reasons or whatever. I don't know, but I don't think UFC has said no. You can't. Well, certainly if you get heel hooked and you got to fight sure. coming up, sure, of course. Yeah, that's no way. Bueno. Of course, but like, how does Bellator? You know, Bellator just takes that risk <laughs> because I think they look at it as more exposure for their fighters. Hundred percent. So, like, if their fighters become more popular because they win a tournament like ADCC, that's a win for them. You know, hundred percent. Yeah. And I don't know a ton about the women, but one name stuck out to me, and that's uh, Ryzen's best, Gabby uh, Garcia. Uh, you know what? She used to be really huge. She's still I've really seen, huge. I've seen more recent pictures no. seems like she's slimmed down that she's gotten into super good bjj shape you know as opposed to just trying to be a, a bucket i, I have a question it, what, the fights that she has in ryzen are they just open weight like do they just allow her to certainly when she beat that older woman to death <laughs> 
That that was one of the only fights in my life that made me feel uncomfortable. Uh, let me ask you this before we even get into a grappling. I have no <laughs> idea if she's a black belt. I'm sure she is. I'm she's sure so. Not, yeah, but her versus cyborg tomorrow. Open yeah. weight. What happens? Open weight. Open drugs, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see that. Yeah. Let them let them juice, baby. Oh my You God. know how I feel about this. Let no, honestly, if the MMA promotions could keep it clean and could have these people compete. You want to see the best fight the best. That's my principle. Mm -hmm. So I would have open weight between her and Cyborg, Kayla, Nunez. I have all this of them kind of fight train, each other. This hype train, now we're really going off topic, but this hype train of Kayla Harrison, I think Homegirl has three fights. And she's also a double gold medalist in judo. judo. Sure, sure. And she has huge 155 pounds. Fights. I don't Cuts think, to 155. I just don't think she's like the next like goat already at three fights. I don't think she's... And kind of tailor-made fights, like fights that she's supposed to win. I don't... See, GOAT is a... It's always a difficult conversation. But right? like you're saying you put Jessica Cyborg, her, and like this crazy... Well, because it goes back to your point about technique, right? Yeah. You, you have a different metric for technique. Do I think that make her being a judo champion makes her highly technical? Yes. Yeah. Is she one of the biggest women fighters on earth? Yes. Is she young? And still in her prime, yes. She's so a with lot all shorter than with me, technique, <laughs> youth, and size, I don't know what you mean by goat, but I think she could beat ninety percent of people on the planet, males and females. Ah, uh, just females. <laughs> <laughs> uh, clarify. Yeah, well, there there are biological differences there, mm -hmm. but I would like to see that too if they were down for it. They have to both be down. I want to see her uh, spar or something with her 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 husband. The one that fought on the UFC card yeah, last night. Oh, what's his name? I don't know. Uh, Rocco Martin. Anthony Rocco Martin. How? What weight class? Like welterweight. Okay, so they fought, at weight. fought at three or four fights at lightweight. That's interesting. 155. Have them yeah. go at it. <laughs> that would be hilarious. They probably do help each other if they're both fighters. American top team. You know, there's that Thai way of sparring where you lightly tap each other. So I don't think sparring wise for the strikes that that would be out of the question and then grappling guys and girls grapple all the time yeah so it doesn't seem to be an issue would be funny would be funny uh, any any closing thoughts on adcc before we transition to that that halfway um, my, my favorite right now i'm just like really happy with the selection so far and i'm excited to see who's going to come next i think we'll have even more hype as the date gets closer. And we know all the people. Yeah, yeah. And I'm I'm very excited for it this year. Might even sign up for Flow Grappling. Look at that plug. <laughs> <laughs> they paying us too? <laughs> so CJJ F N stands for Combat Jiu Jitsu Fight Night. If you look up hashtag CJJ F N on Twitter, I dominated the hashtag. So you'll see a lot of my commentary there if you want more of the play-by-play. -play. The big picture thing the I have to tell is you, you're probably the only one watching it, and that's why it's not going to become a No, they're, they have great views, man. I hope so. They have I ABI so. before it transitioned to the combat jiu-jitsu right. fight night in Worlds. The EBI were some of the highest, the highest views mm -hmm. of any grappling event, even than, higher than a lot of fighting events. It's incredible, the numbers that he got. Yeah. Actually, Gordon Ryan was speaking critically of Eddie Bravo, who gave him all of these opportunities, because even though he was announced as a heavyweight fight, and there were a lot of pullouts in this event, he was supposed to be in it, Josh Barnett was supposed to be in it, Rustam Chisev, who we said earlier, was supposed to be in it, Verdun, all these dudes were supposed to be in it. They pulled out. But anyway, Yuri Shamos won the absolute tournament that they had. And it was a phenomenal tournament. Probably one of the most active guys right now. Yuri. Very active. He just fought Rafael. Yeah, Rafael right? two days ago. Yeah. Oh my god, phenomenal. And Is it Rafael or Rafael? You know he's American, so I go with Rafael, but he does jujitsu, so Rafael. <laughs> <laughs> by, by virtue. I feel like you can go either way. Honestly, I'd have to ask him. He yeah. speaks Portuguese too, which yeah. makes it more difficult. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, but you know, Yuri's super active, for sure. So Rafael's super active, like... Yeah, but, so Gordon Ryan and uh, Verdum are going to be, they were announced as heavyweight. They had a tease kind of pose session. They're going to have a heavyweight match for the heavyweight that title of CJJ. But anyway, EBI had the highest numbers, and right. then they switched it to CJJ. 
So I'm not the only one. But anyway, there are a ton of viewers. You could see. But are they losing? CJJ are they FM. losing some viewership because there's that traditional um, love for like old school jujitsu? Like you know, like they just want to like that. You mean in the gi? I mean, right? No, but I'm saying like, is it losing? Because so, even the EBI guys might be like. Um, that that's like too savage. You know what I mean? So look, like, there's a pendulum, right? Right. The pendulum swings back and forth, but over time, it repeatedly swings in one direction. So you have traditional Japanese jujitsu, then you have the improvements of Jugado Kano to judo. Mm -hmm. You have the Brazilians moving it to the ground. You have Eddie Bravo. Sometimes jokingly calling it the Mexican Jiu Jitsu, but mostly 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu, which says let's just do all these things mostly in the clinch without the gi, mm -hmm. so it's more practical, practical for self defense and MMA. And then he believes that the next evolution is adding strikes. And my guess is that here, I'm gonna say his name again, him and Joe Rogan, when Joe Rogan retires from the UFC, are gonna start an MMA promotion. Mm. And they're going to have bare knuckle rules. No cage. They're going to have no cage. It's going to be like in a wrestling arena or a football. I don't mean a ring. I mean like how they have it in college wrestling, amateur wrestling, mm -hmm. a huge stadium. And I think they're going to have no time limits or at least no rounds. I think they're going to make it as close to a simulated real fight as possible. And I think Eddie is though. trying to get people accustomed to, hey, if you can do jujitsu... How can you do jujitsu under pressure with slaps? If you could do jujitsu under slaps, could you do MMA? Yeah, my point was not necessarily how it's going to extrapolate in the future and how it's going to turn out. Currently, is the thought process like very positive for combat jujitsu from transitioning from regular jujitsu, or is it like people are scared of it and unsure about? My it? man, so you got to do a poll, otherwise we're just shooting the shit. <laughs> no, I know that's why. Like, yeah, I'm saying you are answering kind of like a for a future scenario. Yeah. I was saying, I was more interested in like what's happening now. Well, fans, um, holla at us. If you're listening, let us know what you think. He knows what he thinks. I know what I think. But we'd like to hear. Yeah, yes. we'd like to hear. Um, and then, did you have any more? Just on, on CJJ, so we had Kevin Casey, who's a Hickson Gracie black belt. You got heel training partner. Uh, yeah, I've trained with him before. He's not necessarily my <laughs> long-time training partner, but we've rolled a couple times. John Thor Blank, a 10th Planet guy. 10th Planet guys, you said, aren't doing well. Mm -hmm. This was a classic new school versus old school. Ten In Planet. his own team's format. But yeah, yeah, but 10th Planet versus Hicks and Gracie. Mm -hmm. And the 10th Planet guy wins via heel hook. Then you have and Yuri Simone versus Steven <laughs> Martinez. Yeah. Yuri wins that one in yeah. overtime, yeah. which is the EBI format that you could say he's not used to because right. he's a traditional guy. Mm -hmm. Then you have that traditional guy against 10th Planet. So another old school versus new school. And he won that one. So, but that just might just be that you're his beast. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, I, yeah. sometimes, yeah. as much schooling as you're gonna have, or as much as like you can be Dana hair trained, if you run into a beast, you might lose. There's <laughs> a there's a debate to be had that genetics, individual know how, and strategy mm -hmm. are kind of number one and two priorities. Yeah. And that the third might be your training and schooling. Yeah. But certainly those got to be the top three values, right? For sure. And then you throw in like age, strength, right, and conditioning, right. yeah. and, I think and everything else. There's also like being your peak, it. you know, and I think Yuri right now is like, he's peaking, you know. What What are the odds that you have him winning his division and then the absolute of ADCC? I think he's a definite favorite. Yeah. I think Wouldn't be a dark horse. No, he's one of the favorites right out the gate. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously he's going to go through Gordon. He's got to go through, you know some tough guys interestingly he's a little shorter than them yeah i think they might list them at six i'd have to look at it but he looks more five eleven five ten i don't believe any he was very there. powerful very no, powerful from how i've seen so him strong. grapple he's so strong yeah so i think that's all i had to say about cjj fn unless you wanted to add any more you know how i feel about cjj yeah. I'm so uncertain. Please make me more certain. Like, but you, you've you watched it with me, so I know you I have, like it. I have. You know, like, I, obviously I enjoy MMA, I enjoy violence, and I also enjoy jiu-jitsu, so I feel like I would enjoy it. But there's something, I don't know if I want to throw the term sacrilege, but I will. Maybe something happened Go ahead. with if MMA. is your religion. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, if, if jiu-jitsu is your religion. Yeah, jiu-jitsu. 